Good. Good afternoon, everybody. I made the mistake of listening to a professor colleague when figuring out the title of my CppCon talk this year. And it, I called it C++ class natures in their canonical form and how to find them. So there are many strange words in there. And I like to give you a speed version, which is actually titled, What Classes We Write? And Virtual is Overrated. Um, Howard was just before here, he knows that table very well, but even he claims he cannot remember it always or, or figure it out all of the time. I strongly encourage you to watch his talk from ACCU 2014 on what sp uh, special member functions do you get when you define or not define one of those. And there's a big area in the center where we get wrong things because and we cannot change that because. And they, they are even more wrong than just what do you think there. But to give you the natures of class that we write, the one major class that you should write in C++ is value types. Values just work, full stop. Rule of zero is best. There are many people who still write polymorphic types. Who is using virtual on a daily basis? So, take down your arms, forget about virtual. It's much highly overrated. I was in the OO camp before, but the main reason is you don't want to use virtual. Why we are fans of virtual? Because we grew up with object-oriented programming. And why are we big fans of that? Because that was the first languages that allowed us to specify our own types. Today, we can specify our own types in C++ without using virtual. So why do we still use it? And there are other types that are strange. Uh, fortunately, Sean Perrin uh, taught me we should use relationship types, uh, call them relationship types. You might uh, know them under the name of pointers. Relationship types are good as long as the relationship is valid, but they can break up without you noticing, and that's a bad thing. We get dangling, so we hang ourselves with relationship types sometimes. And there are these tie people uh, who are managers. Uh, many techies don't like managers, but they're there to have you help you make a better job, as well as our managing types who help us to manage our resources. And these are the four major categories of class types we write. And if your types don't fit there, then you have a hard time to, to implement them correctly or uh, might not have thought correctly which category your type belongs to. Now, gets to some of the things where even the defaults are wrong. If you have a type that has an uh, just a regular type and forget about the destructor, it's just there to show the UB. Uh, if we assign from a temporary to a temporary, actually we can do that because the implicit operator equals doesn't have an, a ref qualification. So if you want to have a ref quali uh, an L value reference, just take a temporary, assign another value to it, and you get, as a result, an L value reference to a temporary, which is kind of strange because it breaks the C++ type system. So if we bind that to a, to a, uh, let me see, to a reference, like um, how it told us just right now, we can actually get immediately dangling reference. So if you want to hang yourself, use that trick to get immediately dangling and you hang yourself and it's undefined behavior. To fix that, actually, we need to define the assignment operator with the ref qualification, L value ref qualification. And this is the way how it should have been from the beginning. There was even a proposal doing so, everybody forgot about, from 2005. Before we had R value ref qualification, actually someone proposed to have L value ref qualification on the assignment operator. We still don't have that. Some of the cracks, some of the things just fall through the cracks. So some history on C++. I haven't been there and I didn't pay attention. It just occurred to me this summer, well, there's a problem there. So actually, instead of the rule of six looking like that, it should look like that. Ref qualify your assignment operators. I know we cannot change the standard yet and maybe never, but that's one of the reasons that you should use ref qualification. And there are other areas as well. 
Now, another thing. Okay, you want to use virtual. If there are one, are in one of, if you are in the one of the few cases where you have to use a virtual base, cl uh, a base class with virtual destructor and maybe other virtual member functions, then you better know, don't get slicing. If you don't know what slicing is, don't write virtual. <laughs> if you get slicing, you want to prevent it. And the thing is, from Howard's table, we all learn, oh, we get copy assignment and copy uh, construction, and we don't want, want to get rid of that because they uh, will give you slicing. So I invented uh, a, a new rule, which I nicknamed rule of Desdemova. If you have a destructor defined, delete the move assignment operator. Why is that better than the rule of six? Because it's less code to write. It looks strange enough so that people will recognize, oh, something special happens here. And it also keeps your uh, default constructor alive, which is something you can derive from the table uh, uh, of Howard's table. So my recommendation, if you write virtual base classes and apply the rule of Desimova, it's the uh, least amount of code to get exactly the behavior you want. And even the standard just introduced a new type, uh, polymorphic uh, memory resource, which uh, forgot that and is uh, could get slicing. So copying, that's what I said. Now, there are other options than virtual to get polymorphic behavior. We have standard variant now in the, uh, in the language, and if your set of subtypes is, is fixed and limited, and not about to extend, variant might be a, a better thing to get your value types around. And one area where you might use virtual in encapsulation is when you do implement type erasure. But better let the experts like Sean Parent do that, and at least he will show you how to do it. Now, the managing types are come in several things. One very simple thing that's very often used, if you have managed a resource, you just want to uh, construct it at construction uh, and destroy it when you uh, destru uh, destruct the ob object or release it when the you destruct the object. And again, you don't want to copy it because that will uh, uh, mean that you might actually um, have release the resource twice, which gives you double deletes in, in case of memory. So again, apply the rule of Desdemova to prevent copying uh, in that case, and that's how you should actually implement scope-based resource management if you have to do that yourself. What about unique managers? Uh, with unique managers, they are almost like the scope-based resource managing, but you want to have move operation. If you want to implement move, you must have a specific uh, representation of the move from state. And the move from state has to be special. You have to distinguish it. Unique pointer is easy because that's, it's easy to have null pointer as a move from state. If you have a very generic resource and your resource type is, uh, doesn't have that special value, optional can be your rescue. So standard optional has a specif adds another specific value to your type the empty value, and that's actually perfect for representing the move from state of a resource where every value of the resource type is, is possible. And this is a canonical form on how to implement a unique resource. What's missing there is how to actually acquire the resource because that's resource specific. But this could be actually something where you, uh, how you implement that, and why don't I have the rule of six? Because well, if you define the move operations, the copy operations go away anyway, and you don't want copying with the unique t uh, resource manager. And what about shared managing? Who has implemented a shared manager? Oh, a few. Don't. <laughs> I know that Marshall is an expert. He might be able to do that. And I know he, his manager is shared resource, I guess. And maybe some more. So use shared pointer resource and concurrency control, which we learned also about today. If you uh, went to the um, real-time talk that was actually about concurrency control, uh, there you should, if you watch the videos, watch that and learn the details about that. Now, the let's say the superhero powers that we need is if you want to have a managing type that is actually has value semantics. Just consider standard vector. You can copy them, everything works fine. The reason, uh, the, the thing is, your resource that you're managing as a value must be copyable. Otherwise, it's not possible. But it might be expensive to copy, so you want to have move operations. So it might be hard, but it's rewarding because once your type is 
behaving like a value, everybody can just use it without thinking too much. And it just works. All the rule of zero, if, uh, if it's a member, just works correctly for your type. And that's good. Now, to sum up, we have different categories of types. We have managing types that come in different flavors. There are simple ones like scope manager that's easy to implement or relatively easy. You might need a bit more experience with unique manager, but optional might be your wiggle way to, to get there. And um, for value category managers, it's a bit more to do. And otherwise, apply the rule of zero. Just be aware that relationship types are hard, like relationships are hard that require hard work to not dangle or break up. And if you really want to still use virtual, follow the rule of Destimover and get rid of the too many lines of code that might not do anything useful. And that's my talk. <laughs>